Hey, Cooper, how you doing, man? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Uh, obviously, it's been a, uh, week number two. What have been your, your overall thoughts as far as just being out there with the guys and, and kind of just building some of that chemistry uh, as you guys move towards these camps? Yeah, I mean, just invaluable reps, really. Um, obviously, as a offense, having a new signal caller, having a new guy out there, just being able to see the field with him kind of trying to understand the things that he's seeing and uh, you know, how he's, how he's analyzing things on, on the go. And um, everyone has a different nuance of how you want to you know, play certain concepts, the throws that you, you lean on, the throws you want to make, things you want to see um, and how you want to dictate certain things. So just being able to have great conversations too, and just being able to see the, uh, see the field through, through his lens and um, understand what Matthew wants us to do at, at receiver and how he wants us to run our routes and, uh, the holes he wants us to find. And I think just really just being able to be back out there with the guys is just so much fun. Uh, there's, nothing, there's nothing like playing football with your, with your buddies. So uh, it's been a, been a really fun couple weeks. When you talk about communication, what uh, you and Robert are obviously being the elder statesman uh, at that position, but you have a, a new wide receiver in, in Deshaun Jackson and what his resume is brought to the table. And you have also the rookies as well, like to add well, uh, obviously Van Jefferson coming back. So what, what do, how do you all get on the same page um, and how do you bring the the others up to speed to where you all are so you guys can be on one accord? Yeah, well, you know, Deshaun's been in this offense before. Um, and to say uh, we're the elder statesman, you know, I think he he owns that he owns that that title. So I can't take the elder statesman from from D Jax. I think I was in like eighth grade when he first got in the league. So uh, he's still faster than I am. So I like I'm not trying to talk crap or anything. He's so much faster than I am. So he's still still got the wheels. Uh, but uh you know, he, he's been in his offense before. He's, you know, some of his terminology, the carryover, the understanding of, um, you know, his time with, with Sean, too, in Washington. Um, you know, some of that stuff's carrying over. So he's, he's able to pick that stuff up really, really you know, pretty quickly. Um, and then Tutu's just coming along, just finding all the rookie guys, uh, asking a lot of questions, just kind of, um, as guys that have been in his offense for a while, just providing answers, providing, you know, perspective that maybe a coach doesn't know because they haven't done the reps and seen there's the little nuances of how you do things. But, um, just trying to provide just kind of little tips here and there, um, help those guys out. And, um, you know, it's really just great conversations. I mean, I'm playing, playing with each other, but then also understanding the time between reps and just communicating how we're seeing the field. Um, it's going to be a really fun, really fun season. we got, we got a great group of guys. Thanks, Cooper. Yes, sir. Lindsay. Hey, Cooper. Have you uh, mentioned to Deshaun that you were in the eighth grade when he started in the NFL? I think I, I think I did. I, I had to go back. I can't remember if I told him exactly it was eighth grade. Um, I had to go back and look it up. I think he was in his 14th year right now. Um, that puts it what, whatever that is going into 14. It's uh, anyway, 17. I quit math in the eighth grade. So I'm not sure. 2007, I believe. So, um, yeah, so I was, I think I was like seventh or eighth grade when he came into the league. So, um, I don't think I've, I don't think he knows. I don't think he really understands like, you know, like I was a child when you were playing football, NFL football. So, um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty funny. Uh, this receivers group seems um, as deep as it has really since you've been here. Um, that's not meant as any disrespect to anybody else. But, uh, you know, when you look at kind of that third position and now you've got three guys that, who could very well step into that role, what's it like um, having such a deep receivers room going into the season? Yeah, it's, it's really, it's a, I mean, I guess in some ways it's a luxury. You've got guys that, um, you know, you got such a deep um, group of guys. That, and really the next best thing about it is that guys aren't just locked in on, you know, one position. You guys want to learn the entire offense. So you really feel like you've got five guys that can play every position that you ask them to. So you move guys in and out, um, you know, run concepts for, you know, full groups, no matter what the formation, however, however you want formation, you can have Deshaun on the inside, me on the inside, Rob on the inside, Tutu on the inside, Ben on the inside. You're just not knowing where guys are going to end up at. Um, it makes it really fun for us to be able to kind of move around this offense, you know, being able to, you know, run things, complementary routes to get other guys open and um, know that we're all playing off of each other and understanding that together as a, as a group is, uh, is great. And you've got the right guys in there, the right, uh, the right lack of ego to be able to play for each other. So it's a good thing. It's pretty special. And last one for me, um, but obviously you're going to know Matthew on the field. Have you had much of a chance to kind of start to get to him off the field as well? Yeah. So, yeah, we've, uh, we've all spent some time together, uh, went out, you know, to dinner with, with, uh, his family and, um, he's really, you know, really fun guy to be around. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's been really good just in terms of clicking in terms of on the field, uh, the conversations we've had off the field, whether it's football or not, just feeling, uh, being like that chemistry, you know, 
chemistry, whether you're talking about playing on the football field and how you're seeing defenses or, you know, just being able to sit down and have conversations over, over dinner. Um, I feel like all that stuff kind of plays into itself, uh, plays into each other. So, um, you know, it's been, it's, it's been nice to kind of get to know him and his family. Doc? Hey, Cooper, how are you, man? Let me introduce myself, man. Doc Holliday, co-host of the Ramblers podcast with Isaac Bruce. And you're talking about age, man. I, when I played for the Rams, you were three years old. So <laughs> I know Deshaun is old, but I'm old. But talking about that, Lindsay asked a good question. That, that, that chemistry you're trying to get with Matthew Stafford. Now, I know you all are unselfish, but receivers like the football. So when Matthew goes out there early, you know, are you all kind of jockeying for his attention, man? Because, you know, hey, whoever has a good relationship with the quarterback – off the field and pre-game, post-game, pre-practice, post-practice, normally gets the ball a little bit more than everybody else. <laughs> no, there's there's no there's no like jockeying for attention. Oh, that, okay. that, must been, that must have been something that was done back in 96, 95. You know, that wasn't that's not and we're not we're not about that here now. So um, you know, we're 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 about winning games and whatever it's gonna take to win games, that's kind of that's what we're about. And one more question, man. Tutu, have you had to have you had to kind of slow him down some because he's fast, and I know that's good having that speed with the Sean and Tutu out there. That gives you and Robert more, you know, more room and more space to operate in the middle. But have you had to slow Tutu down any man? Because you know, rookies sometimes they just want to take off, especially receivers when they know that's they got to relax. That's a, a bit. Yeah, that's a real thing. Now he's done a good job. You know, we we talk a lot. You know, be be quick, be fast, but not in a rush. And, and, you know, he's, he's done a good job of that, being able to get to his depths, um, you know, push, push uh, through his, his depths, not cutting things off short. Um, you know, but he is, he, he's so fast. It, it's, it's pretty freaky seeing him. You got him and Deshaun lined up outside a couple of times and seeing those guys, you know, race through 15, 20 yards and some of their routes. It's, a, it's pretty fun to watch. Has he gotten his rookie responsibilities yet, man? I know y'all just in OTAs, but has he got something that he has to do or he has to bring? I'm telling you, this is – it's, it's a new age, you know, back in 96, you know, I've had that. We just, we don't do it here. Huh? Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay, man. Say no the more. Rookie, the rookie, rookies are living good here. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Cool. Thanks, man. Nice to meet you, man. Yes, sir. You too. Jordan? Hey, Coop, man. How you doing? I'm good. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Um, so in, in an offense that's so predicated on timing uh, between quarterback, you know, his, his drop back, hitches the steps in your own routes how do you establish that outside of reps because I know that's the most important thing but in terms of communication and tape what kinds of things do you really hone in on for those details and getting those um, in place I think a lot of that really is you know within a drop a quarterback has a lot of tools you know in terms of his eyes you know his shoulders where he's trying to move guys and I think that's the big thing is understanding on, on plays you know you might have two windows and you, you only got the tight first window or you can hang on the second window and, you know, having the conversation, well, hey, would you rather hold this hook player away and try to sit, zip this into this first window? Or are you thinking more you're going to take him to me and hit this thing behind him? Um, so kind of understanding, like, just things like that. But well, when am I really trying to get my eyes around? When can I anticipate these, the ball to get out versus certain looks? And understanding how he's manipulating coverages and what he feels comfortable with. And uh, even within his drops, you know, just kind of seeing the, the nuance of using his eyes and shoulders to move guys and anticipate throws. Um, you know, that, that helps us out at receiver because now we're, you know, we're really being able to anticipate when that ball's coming and also get into those windows or, or tempo through windows that you know that he's really trying to get to. So um, having those conversations in just terms of how he's manipulating coverage, how he's seeing things, what he's comfortable with and what kind of throws he prefers to make, um, that's kind of something that we kind of focus on when we're talking, uh, you're talking those things through. Are there sometimes like compromises? And I know that word has like a, maybe a negative connotation at times, but because you, you've been used to one, one series of timing and one type of way to run things, especially when you're really getting granular into it, but then maybe he's got a new idea that he brings to the table. So what, what's that compromise like? And I wonder if there's anything that maybe you've tweaked to maybe go toward what he's comfortable with. Yeah, you know, I think uh, I think in the real world, compromise can be a kind of a taboo word. Um, kind of, you know, I think that's like a you know, you can be in, end up in kind of like a lose lose situation. Um, but in football, for me, I'm thinking you know, compromise a lot of times can translate into in football. In the football world, you're talking about collaboration now, and really like we we're collaborating to put the most efficient offense on the field. Whatever it takes for me, however he wants to run routes, however we want to run routes, um, however he wants to throw the ball or manipulate coverage. 
whatever it's going to look like to be the best offense we can possibly possibly be when we step on the field. And that's what we want to do. At the end of the day, you know, compromise, compromise to me, it, that doesn't exist in football. It's collaboration and being able to make sure that we're on the same page with each other, that we're working in tandem with each other. Um, and, uh, you know, that I'm doing the things that I need to do. So that he's seeing the field exactly how I'm seeing it. And we're in those spots together. Um, you know, so that's kind of, you know, that's kind of my take on, on that. It's like the office episode, the win, win, win. Exactly. Ethics. Yeah. No, 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 <laughs> no, uh, no, what is it? Uh, dogs or kids playing poker t-shirts here. Yeah. We're not, we're not, we're not wearing any, 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 uh, you know, any compromised t-shirts here. Thanks. Coop. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. <laughs> Claudia. Hey Cooper. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. So, how has this experience with the team last few years prepare you to work with this new quarterback? Well, I just think the more like you, you just spend time with so many different kinds of people in terms of how you, they see the field. You know, last year got a little bit of time. Obviously, spent three years, four majority of four years with um, Jared, but also spent some time with John Wolford. So, um, you know, being able to just understand, you know, you see a little bit of how different guys play the game, what kind of things they like, and uh, being able to prepare with these guys throughout the week and um, you know, I think that just taught me a lot in terms of like what I've talked about collaboration. I think, you know, I, I love the ability to collaborate, to be able to adjust things, to be able to make things as efficient as possible, to be able to play off of you know, things I've done in the past, to be better when, you know, week to week and, um, and being able to grow really. I feel like if we can, if we can continue to grow and never be stagnant with, you know, where we are as a football team, as individuals too, uh, if we can continue to grow and push each other, we're going to be in such a good place. So um, that's a big thing for me is I, I've learned just, you know, to pursue that relentlessly of finding guys and pushing guys to grow and to, you know, push me to grow as well. So, um, you know, that's something that I've kind of learned over the last two years and um, just, uh, you know, really fearing stagnancy um, is, is a big thing. Thank you, Cooper. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Gary. Uh, hey, Cooper. Um, first of all, how is your knee and Given that the season is getting long, has gotten longer now, um, have, have you guys, have you, Reggie, or have you, have you guys worked toward a program that maybe can help you manage that situation through a longer season? Yeah, well, uh, you know, my knee's doing really well. Um, it was such a weird, it's such a weird injury um, when what, going through the end of last year. Um, you know, we did everything we could coming into that last game to try to. Uh, try to get things get things back on the field. I mean, I think we had, I don't know, I don't know I've had 12 to 15 needles put in my knee that that week, just trying to figure out how to either it's numbing the pain or pulling fluid out, all the different things you're trying to do just to try to get back on the field. And, uh, it, you know, we didn't, we honestly didn't call that until the last second in terms of I wasn't going to be able to go, um, which was a heartbreaker. But, you know, that thing ended up really carrying out, you know, for a a good portion of the off season in terms of the time it took to kind of get that thing going. It was, you know, a weekly process of getting someone to come out, you know, every single day of, uh, of the off season, try to work through that and get, be able, be able to get back to so I can be training again. Um, but yeah, it's feeling great now. Um, you know, no issues with it. In terms of moving but, forward, you know, Reggie, Reggie and, and Byron, um, you know, that whole staff, I'm sure they've got a great plan in place for it. Um, I'm not sure they've outlined that what that is yet with us. Um, but I know they're gonna have a great plan and talking about taking care of guys and um, you you're the best football teams are the healthiest football teams so um, you know that's uh, that stays true pretty much every year and um, you know we've done a pretty good job of of being pretty healthy and you know kudos to those guys for always having a plan for for making that happen need to do to kind of not let that uh, obstruct actually getting there you know it's funny because you uh I think coming in last year I think we were having the opposite conversation and uh you know I think my answer is the exact same we judge ourselves within these walls our expectations exist within the walls of our facility here within our receiver room within our quarterback room within our team room you know our expectations and our um you know our uh our goals are set within those walls and we judge our judge each other within those walls as well. 
Um, so whatever anyone else says outside of that, you know, let that stuff go to the wayside. And you know, we're going to push each other. We're going to have expectations for ourselves. And, and at the end of the day, our expectations for ourselves are always going to be more than anything that anyone outside of this facility has for us. So, um, you know, anything like that, that falls to the wayside because we know what we're about. We know what we expect of each other, what we expect of ourselves. And, um, you know, whatever anyone else has, you know, whether it's last year and the expectations then or this year and the expectations now, um, you know, that stuff doesn't matter. It's about what, what it's about what we want to do, but we, what we want to dictate, but what we want to make this year about. So, um, you know, that at the end of the day, that's what's important. Thanks very much. Yeah, no problem, Gary. And we'll wrap up with Jordan. Hey, Cooper, uh, just one more for me. I'm not sure how much you can even share about this, but um, with bursitis, um, my understanding is that if it gets, if that knee, if you just hit it the wrong angle, that fluid starts going again. Um, it, how do you mitigate that? Like, how do you, I mean, obviously football is, is a contact sport. So when you guys go about your, your management plan and, and everything, um, how do you sort of mitigate that type of thing? And, and then kind of know now some of the signs of, uh, Hey, we, you know, maybe we got to, uh, get in and, and get this looked at versus, um, you know, play, playing through certain scenarios. Yeah. Well, you know, I think, uh, I honestly don't know what the rule is either. So I'll just answer, answer generally. Um, so I'm not <laughs> supposed to do either, but, uh, the, in terms of Versailles, Versailles was something that I dealt with during the course of the year. It wasn't, it wasn't what, at the end of the day, it really wasn't what kept me out of that last game. You know, I had something else. There's a French name that's uh, basically a degloving um, of the tissues beneath my skin. And so, you know, pulling, it's kind of, it's like a, it's not, it's not a pretty thing, but um, it was a degloving injury. It wasn't bursitis. So, um, you know, I, I dealt with bursitis earlier in that year, but it wasn't anything. I was playing through that just fine. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. Obviously, you know, we're going to do some, some things to kind of mitigate that risk uh, going into the year, have a plan to make sure that we're taking care of that. But, um, you know, this was something else that was just kind of a freaky thing that, you know, just happened to happen and it's unfortunate, but it's just something that happens. You can't really prevent it. Um, but, um, you know, you, you, it happened. So, uh, just moving forward from it. Yeah. Well, that's good context, Coop. Thanks. Cause it's like a, that's a one-time thing. That's not a recurring. Yeah. yeah. So that's good context to have in terms of management. I appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. All right. That's all for today. Cool. Appreciate you. All right. Thank you guys. Jordan, sorry for calling you, sir. It won't happen again. All right. <laughs>